certainly want to thank uh, everyone who came this morning. Uh, I think I counted 62 speakers, um, and I want to thank all, all, all of you for coming and you know coming out this morning and, and having the time to make those comments. I'm going to I'm going to go quickly through my presentation. Talk about the choices that PSD, the board, has to make this morning. Uh, give uh, some context to where we are and, and how we got here, and then how this sets us sets a framework for our future. The, the choices that you have this morning is to either ask the Pinellas County Commission to place the referendum on the ballot for November 4th, of 2014, or to cut bus service or start planning on how we're going to cut bus service by 18%, unfortunately not just one time, but 18% in the first year and then smaller incremental cuts in subsequent years. As you know, PSDA does not have the power to uh, put this on the ballot. Only the county commission does. So this is the start of a process, but it starts, it starts with the PSTA board. I do think it is not accurate to describe what we're doing today as premature. PS, or Pinellas County has been deliberating and planning and studying how to build a more modern transit system for the county for nearly 30 years. There have been study after study, many of which achieved the same results as we've recently achieved. This map. Uh, it was from a 1997 study, and it looks very similar. In 2010, uh, County Commissioner Karen Seal led a task force that voted 22 to 0 uh, to put a referendum on the ballot uh, between the spring of 2012 and the spring of 2013. Our most recent venture that led us to today was a Pinellas <coughs> County Transit Funding Study that uh, where that was completed at the end of 09, and the PSTA board, you voted 15 to 0 unanimously to do two things out of that study. Complete an alternative analysis, as you know that is now done, and to pursue a sales tax, a sustainable uh, revenue source for, for public transit. I've shown you this chart uh, probably more than a dozen times now, and the purpose for me putting it in the presentation is uh, today, it is not to uh, sh present something that PSTA is on the verge of insolvency or PSTA is uh, on uh, at head of for a fiscal cliff or it has an un unbalanced budget. Quite the contrary. I put this in the presentation to complement the planning and forethought of the PSTA board. The savings that we were able to generate last year, in 2012, and in prior years, the board voted as a policy decision to, knowing what looms out in the future, to take those savings and reinvest those over the next three years so that we can have a balanced budget in those years. Every year, PSDA will have a balanced budget. But the, the board decided, rather than cutting service and increasing fares and and uh, those things to take the savings that we were able to generate, as you heard, through higher ridership and other means, and reinvest those over the next three years to give ourselves time to plan to develop not just the alternative analysis, but a complete transportation uh, package to present to the voters. And PSDA is not alone in, in having to deal with the economic recession and uh, drop in revenue. Uh, nearly every transit system across the country is dealing with the same things. Our friends over at Heart are dealing with the same issue. But what is uh, remarkable and what is very impressive about the PSDA board is how early the board addressed this. They saw this coming back in 08 and started taking measures immediately. And you have made many policy decisions along the way that have allowed us the time to develop this <coughs> transportation plan. We have uh, adjusted service. We have uh, adjusted our fares to the highest level in the state of Florida. 
We have made changes to our paratransit program to bring those costs down. And we have even restructured the way you do your business with uh, more time for deliberation about these important issues. All of these actions by the PSPA board gave us this time to have this dialogue about what is the best transportation plan for Pinellas County in the future. But that time is valuable, but it doesn't change the decision. What, what we're about is whether or not we're going to move forward and try to develop a transportation system for the future of Pinellas County, or cut the bus service back to a lower level, 18% in one year, and I'm going to show you how that, that won't be enough. We'll have to keep making incremental cuts uh, after that. This chart is a different chart than I've, I've shown you. I have extended the same chart out a long time to 2025 for 10 more years. The revenue picture of PSDA looks relatively flat, as it, as it has been over the last several years, showing hopefully the economy will improve, and we have assumed a 2% growth in our, in our revenues. This is the expense chart. It's the same chart I've shown you. As, as you can see, we can cover our expenses with the reserves that you uh, built up. But then instead of a new revenue source, if we need to cut our services back so, so that the red line equals the green line, because we will not have sufficient reserves otherwise, we have to make an 18% cut in 2016 to the bus service. The problem with that is then that same lower level of bus service, inflation will, will take over and those expenses for that, that level of service will grow. In 2017, we will be in a deficit. There will be no reserves and we'll have to cut again in 2017 and then a little bit in 2018 to keep within our, uh, our, re our revenues. What I would recommend if we are not able to move forward today Toward, a, toward looking at a new revenue source is to make a deeper cut, certainly a more dramatic cut, certainly something different than you heard the majority or many of the citizens vote today that they want more bus service. But we would make a 30% cut, or I would recommend a 30% reduction in the bus service in 2016. What that would do is that would bring our expenses down below our revenues and allow us to build up our reserve again. We will be able to build up a reserve you know, for a number of years, and then that we could use that reserve to balance the budget in, uh, until 2023, for another 10 years, while we keep working on, it, on identifying an, an alternative revenue source. Obviously, those, that, that's not what we are, are trying to do. That's not what the PSPA board has done over the last several years. We've been working to improve PSDA in every possible way, uh, and we're committed to still doing that. So what is an alternative future for PSDA? Looking at, looking at the future has been difficult for PSDA as it has been for all services in Pinellas County and, and the United States. This, this map shows the population growth in the Tampa Bay region over the last 10 years from 2000 to 2010 with the pink uh, shaded areas losing or uh, holding steady in population and the blue areas growing in population. In, in order for Pinellas County, as you can see, which has uh, uh, lost or maintained its population, in order for Pinellas County to be, remain competitive as a place where people want to move, when there are such large areas of growth opportunity or easy, developable, uh, vacant land, and the eastern edges of our region, Pinellas County needs to redevelop. The land in Pinellas County has been developed. It needs to redevelop. This is something that the county commission has uh, agreed is one of their key principles, how to redevelop Pinellas County. I think PSTA, <coughs> for a very long time, has not been in a position to assist with this. But we are, we are changed. And we are in a better position to help the county redevelop and improve itself than ever before. We have a, took us a while, but we have a good, really, a, a good project, but we're working closely with the city of Pinellas Park to build a new mid-county terminal uh, in Pinellas Park on US-19. We have an emerging program where we are 
starting to work with St. Petersburg, and we want to work with other cities on on cities, downtown redevelopment plans, and transit corridor or transportation corridor improvement plans, streetscape plans, where PSTA will come to the table and work with our community to make the corridor better and more transit friendly. And last, we are doing something that PSTA has never done before in getting involved in land use planning. We had the first land use planning meeting in this transit building ever, about a month ago, with working with Clearwater planning staff, Largo planning staff, Pinellas Park, the county, and St. Petersburg staff on how uh, planning can be better done around the proposed stations along the alternative analysis to, to <coughs> maximize the benefits of this kind of investment. All those activities are new ways PSEA is reaching out to the community and trying to help the community redevelop and improve itself. Of course, the board knows very well about uh, all the efforts that we are hard at work underway now. We are, are halfway through our uh, bus study and, and working on that still. As you know, we completed our alternative analysis about a year ago. And again, we are now actively about halfway done with the land use planning activities we're uh, partnering with the MPO on as well. All of, these, all of these plans will be done in this calendar year, 2013, and will be packaged together and put together into a complete transportation uh, plan to present back to the PSTA board for approval and then on to the county for approval and to put before the voters. There's a lot more work to do. This is, today is a very important but a first step. What, what's gonna be in that plan or in that box where we put all this together? Certainly the first thing will be dramatically expanded bus services. Later, later services, weekend services, more frequent services, different kinds of bus services. Longer term for Pinellas County, rail will be included in the plan. But out, not before the bus services can be made. The, the, the choice about why we're coming before you now and, for the, and the reason the PSTA should take this action now is to provide the focus and attention that this discussion with the public needs. We would not have gotten 100 people here this morning if, we, if this was not up for a vote. And this is the kind of attention that this program needs to make it the best it can be. We have time now to, to make a good transportation plan to bring to the voters. If we delay, that will, just, that will delay and ultimately lead to a less developed plan to ultimately bring to them. So that, that is the purpose of this morning. Again, the choice is pretty simple to either ask the county to put this on the ballot for 2014 or, or start planning on the alternative about reducing the bus service down uh, without an alternative revenue source. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. What I'd like to do with the uh, no objection from the board is uh, <coughs> typical. We have, we have two actions here that were requested. One, to make a recommendation to the Board of County Commission to set November 2014 as the date to hold a referendum on a transit surtax, and then have some discussion on the role of the advisory committee for Pinellas Transit. My, my preference would be if there was a desire to make a motion on that first action, and then I'd like to just start at one end or the other and hear board comments um, moving forward. I would move to go to the county commission and, and ask And I see that our two newest members are at the ends and our first, so I put you guys on the spot. But uh, we'll start down here with Commissioner Long if you have any comments. Um, if not, that's fine too. I, I do just have a couple of comments um, that I would like to make, and I'll be very brief. I, I truly believe that this issue comes down to a quality of life issue for our citizens in Pinellas County. Am I not on? Yeah, but of life issue for our citizens in Pinellas County. And with all due respect to the people who are very opposed to moving forward to let our voters vote on this, uh, can I believe there was at least one person who said they would not pay one cent towards this issue for the future of our citizens. Um, you know,
know, I just can only shake my head and say, well, thank goodness those parents, parents, and grandparents didn't feel the same way where these people would not be enjoying this fabulous quality of life that we have today. The fact of the matter remains that the infrastructure in our community is not the best that it could be, and I think our citizens deserve better than that. So I hope that we move forward and don't stay stuck in the moment. Thank you. Mr. Scott? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've heard a lot of uh, varying opinions today, and um, this has been an ongoing discussion in our, in our area, our region, for, I've lived here 30 years, and I think it's been probably 30 years of the discussion has been ongoing, so I am uh, very supportive of letting the voters have their say on this. I mean, I think it's, it's time to, one way or the other, let's, let's put it to bed and figure out how we're going to move forward. Um, a couple of uh, notes that I took as people were speaking is um, there were several comments concerning uh, bicycles and as somebody who, who does a lot of cycling in this area, I can tell you you take your life into your hands when you do it. So I think uh, that, that planning for that uh, going forward with all modes of transportation is, is very important. Um, I, would, I would also like to see a more broader discussion uh, on privatization going forward as well particularly as we look to bring other businesses in the mix. Um, I, I do believe that is a very effective way of trying to keep costs down, particularly as we look at what our budgets may be in the future, what their shortfalls may be in the future. And um, also, I think that um, I realize right now that our fare structure is one of the highest in Florida. Um, we have a fare box recovery <coughs> around 20%, give or take a little. Um, I still think that that's really artificially low, and I think as we go forward, we should review our fare structure on, a, on an annual basis and have that tied to, to kind of an independent economic index, whether it be a CPI or minimum wage, something along those lines. I see no reason that, that um, our fare box recovery shouldn't be 25 or, or, or 30 percent. Um, so those are, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start as, as the youngest member of this board, and also a lifelong, <laughs> and as a lifelong resident, and someone who has used our buses, um, I believe like what, what one of the speakers said is, we must start somewhere, and that is here. Um, with the backing of my commission and myself, I was supporting this to give the voters as well, a choice to vote on this, and I believe with the education that we're going forward with, I think that this will pass, and, and I, I, I put my confidence in the voters who can also have this. Thank you. Ms. Rice? Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to thank everyone who spoke today and who attended this public hearing. Strong policies need strong advocates, and this room is filled with citizen and business leaders uh, on both sides of the issue. Everything about our region's future is connected to transportation. Uh, Eisenhower's creation of the interstate highway system in the, in the middle 50s was one of the greatest public works of our country. It spurred our country into growth and connectivity. It made our country less plagued by regional differences. It helped grow and support our middle class and our economy. We live in a new world today with different challenges and different choices, and none of us on this board are insensitive to the very real economic challenges that we experience today. But today's vote is about choices and taking next steps to lay the groundwork for citizens to vote on a sustainable transportation system. And one of the ironies about sustainability is that it requires strong economic growth to support it. And transportation infrastructure can be resented as an expense or it can be valued as an investment to leverage more growth and development. It's our responsibility to make responsible, economically sound decisions that also look, as one speaker said, to take on at least a 50-year perspective to grow and connect our region, to attract quality job creation, reduce emissions, foster better land use planning, reduce our dependency on fossil fuels, and to provide the public more transportation choices. Uh, my vote will be to recommend a referendum to the Board of County Commissioners, and it means that we're putting this on the ballot for everyone to weigh in on our future and to let the people decide. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I want to thank all the people that spoke and came out too. Uh, we had standing room only, but it's down to the uh, manager for this. Now. Um, being a, um, a, a, I guess, a customer of the bus system from uh, from 17 to about maybe 20 years when I first moved out, of, got to high school, moved to Tampa, and even before.
supported and thinking back to my mom and the people that made it possible for her. She never drove. She rode the bus back and forth and she did a day's work out in Snell Island and, and she grocery shopped and did everything she could by the bus. It was very dependent on the bus system or the transportation system. Myself, later when I graduated high school, I used to go back and forth to uh, my vocational school, even dating. I, mean, I used to find my dates on a Friday night around the bus. <laughs> what time the movie was going to end and when was the last bus leaving University Square Mall. And the driver, sometime my girlfriend and I would go down to Nebraska Avenue and he would, if it's just only us on the bus, he would turn the light off and we had our own bus. <laughs> <laughs> But it was, uh, it, it was truly love because that was, that was all the love. The love and the, and the heart transportation system. But, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just um, uh, an advocate and just an individual that's charged with the transportation, the future of transportation for the people of this community, not for me, for the people of this community. I'm, I'm reminded every time, I'm joked by one of my uh, board members up there about um, still dropping that fossil fuel vehicle. The answer is yes. The answer is every time I pull in there and spend $70 to pull it up, I notice how the gas prices keep going up and keep yo-yoing back and forth. We hear a lot of people come up front and talk about a penny. Well, they jack the gas prices sometimes 10, 12 cents a week. Mm -hmm. No one's complaining about that. Also, if you look at your grocery stores, if you go to grocery shop and buy clothing, or, or if you got kids and you, you're spending money on them, everything has increased. I mean, greatly increased in this tough economy. So we're spending a heck of a lot more than a penny. And what are we getting for? The same stuff and sometimes the worse quality. What I look at is the way I look at it, the amenities around our city, the recreation centers, the food. These are amenities and quality of life things. These things probably will never pay for themselves. I had someone come to a city council and explain about the new elevated highway they're going to do to, to improve Gandhi. And, I, and, and just jokingly, I asked them, is it going to pay for itself? People always ask that, and the answer is no. But I do know that we're not going to be able to concrete our way out of this. We've got to look forward to making uh, the community more productive. We've got to make uh, the, have the uh, area where we have a more robust, scalable transportation system that maybe eventually include rail, as one of my colleagues said, Ms. Lapdala. We might even, might even live to see it, because it's probably not for us, but for our grandkids and their kids uh, and the people that come before them. But I do know the expenses that the, our, young, our young college kids are, uh, are faced with in the different college communities that this uh, transportation system will serve with car insurance, car payments. I mean, if you've got young kids, you know the price of that. And in a lot of uh, places that won't, I heard a speaker talk about corporation relocating here, that won't relocate here. I heard the RNC come up several times. Look at the RNC versus the DNC in Carolina. Transportation is a major, major concern when someone looks to come to an area or bring something to the area. How are you going to move and get these people around? It's a simple question. And you see the challenges that we had. It was plain and simple when we had a, the last major event, which was the Republican National Convention of Potential. I attended both nights and I watched people walk blocks and blocks and blocks in because they couldn't get reliable transportation coming in. Then I saw the Democratic National Convention. Had the rail come up, people got off, they would have got 500 more. It was almost effortless. But we have got to know that uh, this does work. I travel in my capacity as elected official to Denver, Colorado, to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. We were just in Boston. And, and, and the way that these uh, transportation systems around the country work almost seamlessly, it, it, it's, in a, it's an event to move the people around almost effortlessly and to try to uh, not contribute to the environmental problems that we have, try to also lessen the blow on their economics as it pertains to what it costs to get them to, to get from point A to point B and own the two or three cars. You know, um, and I, I, I look at, um, when we made a trip to Miami, myself, the chair, uh, and several members up here, and I look at, um, and I look and I remember the, the comments made by Congressman Micah, who's in charge of appropriations for transportation. And I see not one, not two, but three two billion dollar multimodal uh, um, um, projects going on down in Miami that are being funded by public-private partnerships. 
that's the only way this is going to work. You're talking about spending a dime or spending tax money. Well, if you don't have a part, private partnership coming to the table with money also, it, it's never working. But I see it work around these areas. And also, I do know that if you look at the uh, cost of what this penny would get you, similar to what we had with pennies for Pinellas and all the amenities that we have built throughout this county that everybody enjoys, I think it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's the right thing to let the people who are going to be utilizing this system and having to fund this system, I would say, on, on a ballot question. It's just that um, it's, it's, it's not about me. It's about making sure that we start the process that hopefully will get to a more robust, scalable transportation system, be it BRT, um, more frequent uh, uh, bus uh, intervals, and ultimately, if it, if it comes to be real, but that won't happen tomorrow. But we've got to start. Doing nothing is not an option. I, I'm frustrated with my colleagues on the other side of the bay because you, if you operate the silo, you will wither, you will go away. We have got to try to expand and be able to make um, getting around the Bay Area or this region seamlessly. You should be able to, like I did, my wife and I left the uh, Sea Tower Hotel in Boston, walked about a half a block down the Silver Line. Silver Line came out of the tunnel. Okay, it was running on, on uh, electric while I was in the tunnel. It came out of the tunnel, the guy switched it up to diesel, drove it down the street. We went around, I don't know, maybe less than a mile, <coughs> to the airport. The GPS system came on and said, now you're coming up to Terminal C for Delta or Southwest. Then it went right to the next terminal. And we got off at the gate for two bucks. And then he went back out, went back into the town and serviced more stuff. So this can work. We already have systems in place that work. Look at the sun pass. It works all over our transportation system and our toll roads. So we have a, a monetary system that's already working across the spectrum. We have got to find a way to be uh, all inclusive for the region and provide these uh, national transportation options. That's what we charge to do. And me, I, I never fear the outcome of the vote. I never fear taking it to the voters. If you know me, you know that. And I think the voters should be the ones to say what happens with this. Thank you. Commissioner Mogowski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you to everyone who came out today. Uh, we're the educational, I think, for all of us. A um, couple of things I just want to point out. Uh, you know, there's been really good questions, and, and I know that Brad has taken really good notes because uh, this is just one of many opportunities that people are going to have the chance to um, give input. And there's been a couple of comments about how, you know, where, where is the plan? Well, that's what we're working on. Um, this is just the first step in it. Uh, it's a big process. All we're doing today is asking permission from the county if they will give us permission to have a referendum, and if they will, will they give us permission to do it uh, in 2014. That's all we're asking. We're not asking anybody to um, support a plan. Uh, one could say you're supporting an expanded transportation plan by, by saying yes to the referendum, but nothing is in stone at this point. Um, there's been a lot of conversation about how this conversation has been going on for years. It's right. You're, you're right. It has. And it's just about time that we we focus and sum it up and, and, and make decisions. Um, we have to have a vision for what the future of Pinellas County is going to look at, look like, and what the future of our region is going to look like. Um, for me personally, that's what I want to do, is have a vision. Um, that doesn't mean I've made a decision as to what that vision is yet, um, because I think between now and 2014, we're going to have so much public input um, to what your vision is of Pinellas County. But we do have to think about what's, what the, what's Pinellas County going to look like 50 years from now. And yeah, I might not live to see all of the things that that we talk about doing. Um, but as your representatives and as leaders in the community, it's imperative that, that we think about the future. And um, I believe that having expanded transportation in one form or another and being paid <coughs> is, is only going to benefit the vision of Pinellas County. Um, as Brad said, the first 
thing that would happen if a referendum were ever even approved, I mean, and that is so far from this conversation right now, is bus service. Um, there, there were talks of empty buses. Yes, we've had empty buses. Um, and the reason some of those buses are empty is because we're serving uh, a very few minority group people in certain areas that we don't want to just say no to. But in the last three years, we have reduced our bus service of inefficient lines. Um, and yes, we are starting to do better in our financial position, but it, and that's because we've taken extensive, that was kind of the first step, we've taken extensive uh, expense cuts, we've, we've tried to become more efficient, uh, we've tried to look for re revenue, uh, but what we're gaining back isn't enough to do the system, even without rail, that we want to do. Because if you think about it, if you're going, if you if you have one hour service and you want 15 minute service, you're tripling the cost. I mean, you're tripling buses, you're tripling drivers, you're, you know. So it's a lot of money to improve service in the bus system because your highest costs are vehicles and personnel. So those are the things that we have to address if we really want to improve transportation and the different modes, all of those things. Um, and yes, we can do smaller buses, and we just started that in Long County. Um, yes, we can think outside the box. There are all different kinds, but that's what we're going to spend from now to 2014 talking about with the experts and talking about with the public. So everyone's going to get a chance to see what that full plan is. First step, though, is just to find out whether we can even get it on the road. If we can do that, then we have a goal. And hopefully we'll do our job well, planning well, and have plenty of public input. Um, I think the vision for the future of Pinellas County is bright, and I think transportation is an intricate part of it for tourism, for business, for the economy, for the environment, for our seniors, and for our youth. Transportation is probably one of the number one issues, and so I do support asking for Thank you. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, and I'm going to try to be brief here to uh, not repeat the, the comments that have already been made. I do want to uh, acknowledge the uh, people that came and spent time with presenting us with really incredibly thoughtful comments for both sides, and I, and I thank you for that. Uh, bottom line is I think that uh, 2014 is an appropriate date, and Brad made a good co comment, argument that it should be then, otherwise we need to be going in a different direction. I will say that a lot, a lot of work needs to be done between now and then to provide the answers that uh, many of you suggested today. Uh, many of you talked about, or several of you talked about, trust and credibility of PSTA to deliver on this project. And I would suggest that we are beginning to earn your trust, not only with our drivers and the continued operation of our bus system, but the real-time bus scheduling information system, beginning to see Wi-Fi on the buses, the North County connector. Um, the future, we will have to continue to earn your trust by delivering project management, on the what has to be done between now and uh, 2014. And that's really the next agenda item that I look forward to uh, really approving as a package between these two items. Thank you. Mr. So Lutz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I'll be brief as well. Thank you for setting precedent, sir. I um, want to thank everyone who came out uh, today. And I appreciate your stamina looking at almost 1 o'clock here uh, on both sides of the issue. And I think. Um, um, the, the opponents of it, I don't even know where I stand, but I still respect, <coughs> respect your involvement in the process, although we disagree on this issue. Um, I will support the motion on the floor, and I will also I support the board of the county commissioners. I think our role is not just to support it, but to advocate that this is the right thing for our community moving forward. Uh, as uh, the secretary said, there is a lot of work to be done, but a lot of work has been done already on this plan. Go out to Pinellas on track.com and see the plan. Uh, a lot of thought and effort has gone into it. Uh, I see a number of compelling reasons to move forward and no compelling reasons to stop. Uh, in terms of our economy, jobs, and sustainability of this system, uh, this is not just about tweaking 
can't just move a few buses around and sustain the system. We're past that. We've done that. We've raised fares. Um, the preliminary bus study already says that we can't improve the service unless you rob Peter to pay Paul, unless you cut some services to improve other services nominally. And so I can't think of a more important decision that this board has ever made. And I think we need to move forward. Uh, we've worked hard to get to this day. When we hired Brad, it was because he had substantial experience in multimodal systems. Uh, and I believe we need to move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We'll skip down to uh, Vice Mayor Matt Mertz. Well, thank you. Uh, obviously, this is quite the first meeting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I very much appreciate everyone comments. I, of course, prepared as best as I could and read the material. The depth and the information that you've all provided um, helps me quite a bit to come up the learning curve and to get a good understanding of not only your current feelings, but the amount of work that's been done in the past. Um, I've had some experience with the tri rail system on the east coast of Florida when I lived there prior to coming over here. Um, and, and, and saw some of the growing pains as that has come into fruition, um, and also seeing the importance of having multimodal operations to be able to not only just have the bus, but the bus and connection. Once people are there, how they can get to their destinations, that's very important. Um, so, and, and from a business point of view, I also understand the importance of, of, of transportation and how that relates to employers bringing people in and having access to um, uh, uh, good and new, in, a new type um, uh, graduates and, and, and expertise. Two areas of initial concern I had, and some of it was addressed here, and I very much appreciate that. One was when I first had reviewed it, I also agreed that uh, it hasn't been sold yet. And I, I concur with one of the uh, um, gentlemen that mentioned that. Um, I agree, too, that uh, we won't get a, um, uh, a, an affirmative response if it's not sold, and we shouldn't get one if it's not sold. But we have several years to actually work on that and put something together, and uh, lots of input, lots of discussion to come up with something. I think that's very important. And another area that I had some initial concern was, was the economic impact on the surrounding communities, uh, Carpenter Springs to Pasco, where you have a percent difference in the sales tax, let's say Hillsmart to Hillsboro, some of the southern communities uh, like Pinellas Point, where you're facing perhaps eight versus six and a half percent. If that would make differences, if that would make impacts in the uh, uh, the businesses in those particular areas. So it's something we'd like to have discussions with just to make sure. But aside from that, I think that um, overall it makes a, um, I think it's important for the region to look ahead and, um, and I would support the uh, resolution at this point. Thank you. Mr. Barclay. I also would like to thank very much the input from everyone, both pro and con. I think one of the things this demonstrates is how important this issue is and also how prepared and enlightened uh, our population is that they have had the uh, insight to learn more about this already and bring many good ideas to uh, us here on the board. And we thank you very much for that. Um, as, as board members, we, we have a uh, fiduciary and a civil duty to, civic duty to, to move the region forward into the future. Uh, we, as many people have mentioned uh, who spoke earlier, we have a duty to make sure that our city and our region compete effectively with uh, other cities and other regions around the country that already have in place uh, competent, uh, efficient uh, transportation systems. And if we're going to continue to grow uh, the greater Tampa Bay area, the, the Pinellas area, we're going to have to develop a way to make sure that we don't become an economic backwater. And uh, in order to do that, we need to develop this system. So that's important. And the second thing that I think many people mentioned that's very important is 
to discuss the uh, effect of uh, a green system, an environmentally friendly system, system, a system that will improve the health and the quality of life here in uh, the greater uh, Pinellas area. So all these things together, I think, uh, make it extremely important that we do move forward to ask the county board members to put this on the ballot in 2014. And in the meantime, we will continue to uh, listen to the commentary and the guidance and insight of many of the people who are in the Pinellas County area uh, as we try to make this a, an attractive and growing area for both uh, our economy and also for our population. Thank you. Congresswoman Johnson. Thank you, Chairman Dean. It's been a long day, so I don't want to make it any longer than necessary, but um, gosh, all of the fellow, <coughs> fellow commission members have said it all. There isn't very much more I can say except that I'm 67 years old. And um, as an elementary school child, I used to ride the bus from St. Pete Beach, right by Silas Mills, all the way to Central Avenue to Williams Park every Saturday morning so that we could go uh, to lunch at the Gold Room, Moss Brothers, um, and up and down First Avenue, North and South, and Central Avenue, because that was our fun day. And that was on the public bus, okay? So I watched this bus system grow. I can remember when uh, there wasn't a 66th Street, it was a dirt road. And that went from the huge new Tyrone Mall to Pinellas Park. I've watched the bus system grow. And if we slow down, and if we stop now, we're only hurting ourselves. I do want to vote in an affirmative manner today to put this on the referendum so that the rest of Pinellas County can vote. But don't remember, when you stop, you stop. Just, you know, don't do that to our kids and our future. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Roach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a lot of the comments, again, uh, as the comments that have been, have been Stated. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing that is clear from my listening, and I very much thank all the folks here on both sides of the aisle. Uh, one thing is clear to me is that there isn't a lot of clarity in this entire issue. Um, and there's a lot of bad information out there on both sides of the aisle, uh, on both sides of the issue. Another thing, uh, I mean, I did an interview this morning, as a matter of fact, on the radio, and it was introduced as today, you know, as county commissioners are going to vote to put on a ballot. You know? No, 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 no. This is this is the transit board voting to ask. So, uh, and, but in our sort of 24-hour news cycle world and, and scoop world, it, misinformation is going to fly. So I'm reminded of the gentleman who spoke, the architect from Clearwater. I don't think he's here anymore, but he's right. Uh, it hasn't been sold to your point earlier as well. And uh, I can tell you that if we turn this into a Tea Party liberal thing, it's going to fail. If we turn it into a red and blue thing, it's going to fail. If we turn it into a tax versus non-tax thing, it's going to fail. Uh, as you can count on politics and ideologies to screw up most anything. Uh, this is about our county. I too grew up here. I used to ride a bus from Imperial Palms on Keene Road, transfer at Clearwater, Pine Street, go down to Clearwater Beach. We were kids. It was a quarter then. <laughs> um, but that was it, you know. And then we'd ride our bikes down to Safety Harbor to the drugstore. Mm -hmm. The little skinny aisles. And we had, you know, I'm dating myself a little bit, you know, the, the hair goes back. But um, this, uh, there's a lot of unanswered questions in this whole process. I'm a little confused myself um, because I'm not sure what we're, what we're, what we're asking. My understanding was that the alternative analysis $4 million taxpayer funded study. Uh, and it was about rail. 59% of the revenues were recommended were going back. And that's why now I'm hearing more things. Like, well, maybe it's a big bus study. Mm -hmm. And maybe we've got some bike paths and some more uh, trails. And my question is, what, what, what are we putting forward? 
for? What are we asking for? Because my understanding was it was the alternative analysis. And that one cent request was what would be required to fund that. Now we're hearing different things. So are we asking simply the county commission to consider putting a referendum on the ballot for X amount? or a specific amount? What is this body asking? Are they asking for a referendum? Are they asking for a referendum for a penny or a half cent? Because i tell you what I did see in here was common ground out here on both sides, and that was our buses. Our buses need to be fixing, and I personally, I'm not here to talk about whether I like the transit plan or not. This is a transit body, and our decision today isn't to put it on a referendum or in support of any plan. It is simply to ask the county commission go forward on a mechanism in which to fund whatever that plan turns out to be. So that, we have to keep that clear. To those who are, in my opinion, those who are opposed to this, or those who are proponents, this is the beginning. This isn't the end. So you're gonna have to stay connected to this whole thing all the way through, because even I, as a PSTA board member, do not know what this plan's about now. Right. <laughs> um, but but I, that's not in the front. But I also understand as a board member, we are a transit body that needs funding for a transit service. And our taxpayers funded a $4 million study. Not ours specifically, but all of our tax dollars did. That resulted in an alternative analysis <coughs> plan, plan. Whether you like the plan or not, it's not the point of this discussion right here. It's not the action of this body at this point. But I absolutely believe that the citizens in this county have a right to weigh in on that transit plan, whether they like it or not. But I would submit that there is an awful lot for this commission member here at PSTA, awful lot of unanswered questions, and an awful lot of gray area here, and often we're lacking a lot of clarity. And I hope that over the next period of time that that gets clear, because if it isn't, I don't, think, I don't see success in this, which is why I often made a comment in several of our meetings that we ought to have a plan B. I'm not comfortable that we don't per se have a plan B either. As a member of the county commission, we have dual roles here. You have four county commissioners here. <coughs> so I can't tell you how I'm talking about when it comes to us there, but I can tell you I'll have a whole different set of questions for that action sitting in that role. But my position here as a, as a transit commission is to forward the concept of we need a transit plan. We need a sustainable funding solution for it. Are we willing to ask the commission to go forward on that? That's where this, this vote is, and that's where this stands. I would tell you that there's an awful lot of unanswered questions. I'll support asking the county commission to go forward with it. With, can we put a referendum on the ballot? But I think there's an awful lot of questions that need to be answered, not only for me in this capacity as we go forward, but also the county commissioner and as a tax bank resident who will vote on it. So we've got a daunting task of uh, information ahead of us, but I'm not going to stand in the way of, of uh, this body attempt to fund an operation. And that really, when you boil it down to it, take everything out, that's what we're talking about. Funding a public transit operation, whether it's buses, trails, tandem bikes, helicopters. It's a public transit operation that's going to need funding, and that's part of our duty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think it's, um, it's obvious that the Pinellas uh, County benefits from having a transit system, and the better the transit system, the more the benefit. Uh, I also don't think it's a question that whether or not we are facing a, uh, a crisis in the next uh, two or three years uh, for funding. Um, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, so we have got to uh, arrange for some funding, otherwise we're going to have to cut uh, the, the transit system. Um, I think that uh, ultimately, I, I agree that with what uh, Don Crane uh, has said, that this is going to be a, a regional question, and the regional aspect is, is probably more important uh, than anything else. Certainly, um, from what we've heard from our state representative and from the federal representative, they're not really interested in 
small town stuff anymore. They're looking for regional solutions to problems. Uh, whatever. Um, this referendum is the first step that I think is important for Pinellas County. And so I would uh, support the, the asking uh, the board to put that on the, on the referendum. Thank you. Mr. Lapa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, special thanks to all the citizens who came out today and spoke to us. Um, it's proof that this is going to be an interesting two years, and we have lots of further communication that we need to have, and I look forward to being a part of that. I strongly support the resolution before us. Uh, this is the right thing to do. It's the right time to do it. We have the right board, I think. Uh, to move our region forward in transportation, and we certainly have the right leadership with uh, and look forward to being a part of this and um, taking our community's transportation system into the 21st century. Thank you. And I also want to thank everyone for, for coming out today. I, it was interesting to see Brad's 30-year history. I was on the Planning Commission in 97 and participated in some of those studies with the city of St. Petersburg. But I think where it started kind of here in the more contemporary sense was one of the first years I was on the board, which is now six or seven years ago, DOT came and did a presentation and they gave us some facts that Pinellas County is the most densely populated county in the state of Florida. And we are the only county that is 95 or 97 percent built out in all the available developable land. They told us that given the, those constraints, they could increase the lane miles on our road system about 20% over the next 30, 40, 50 years, depending on the funding, but our vehicle miles are increasing threefold that amount. Our students, our kids are driving sooner and owning cars sooner. Our parents are hanging on to them later. The two-car families become the four-car family. We are more and more dependent, and they asked us for help because they could not keep up with the vehicle miles given the lane miles we have. We're spending $40 million a mile on US-19 right now. It's approaching the cost of rail transit um, on that road. And this community has to ask itself, when US-19 is completed, and I don't know what that, that even means, <laughs> but then yeah, you go yeah. and do the same thing to Belcher and Ulmerton and US-19. I mean, how many times can we do that? Another thing that I think we always struggle with, but I think we're in a really good place, is on plans like this, when you go to the community, if you go with a completed plan and say, here's what we want, you get accused of not providing that input. If you go there with nothing and say, what do you want to do, we get accused of not doing our jobs with transit agencies to provide some background. So I think we're in a good place. And I think some of the questions today show that the process we've gone through, the, the partnership we created with the Alternative Analysis Study, with DOT, Tibarta, MPO, PSJ, has become a statewide and a national model for partnership on how to do it. We hear from the state and federal government say, you guys figured it out. Get your partnerships together. We shared that funding in the $4 million. We shared in the staffing and in the public output and input on that process. And it starts that basis of that part of the plan. It is not, we're not going to ask the county commission to vote on the alternative analysis plan. That is an element of the plan. We have the 10 most highest performing routes that are our BRT network that are part of that plan. The community bus study we're doing now to improve the efficiency on what we have on, the, on our bus system is part of that plan. The transportation task force, which was several of the board members here, many members of the public, made recommendations on other projects. All those components are going to be in there. We're going to present a countywide all mode of transportation plan for the future of this county, for the Board of County Commission to consider. We do have partnerships with, we were a continued discussion we'll have with PSJ and Hart. We put Hart members and Hillsborough MPO members on our, eternal, our alternative analysis committee. When that, when that study was done and we got into the financing, they told us we never had these discussions. They went to a referendum without their alternative analysis being completed and without the funding scenarios painted for them. And that's why that referendum failed. That was not enough information. So I think moving forward, listening to the public, having almost two years now before this vote takes place to continue this dialogue, to continue refining this plan, hearing the information, the differences in, in our 24 communities as to what all those different needs are is really the direction we're going to go. 
So I think this is the right thing to do. I think it's about time. I like the idea that we put a date on it and move forward and all work together to, to further develop this plan and to go to the voters and, and to do what they want. Um, with that, if there are no further comments, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. <coughs> Our next item. that the planning committee met and discussed this and Chair Mike Field and Mark Lawrence. This is a uh, administrative <coughs> recommendation on how we move the planning process forward by uh, strengthening the role of the advisory committee for personnel transit. As a reminder, PSPA has several members uh, that are on the PSPA board that are on the ACPT uh, Chair Danner, uh, Julie Jowski, Ken Welch, and Susan Vidala are on the ACPT. And the idea is to give that that board or that committee a role in developing this plan so that it transitions from what it has been, which has been a, a project uh, oversight committee, to one that is looking at all the different components that we have just discussed. That it would it, it, it has a meeting scheduled for February 4th, and the agenda topic is the bus plan. That that committee would be the jumping off point. That committee will take all the items that are uh, under development, approve them, green light them into the, into the comprehensive plan, and then send them up to PSDA. When I say PSDA, I mean it's committees and, and the PSDA board. So we started the ACPT moved to PSGA, and then ultimately on to the Mill County Commission. Uh, Mr. Johnson has um, done a, uh, a great job of developing a charter, a, a, which is in your packet, about how the, the ACPT, the roles and responsibilities it might have, he, uh, he, he can address that, or the, the chair, which uh, endorsed this idea. Of the, you know. And I'll, I'll just add that, for those who don't know, the ACPT, the Advisory Committee for Pinellas Transit, is, is a board we made up of uh, members of the MPO, PSTA, TBARDA, and the Pinellas Planning Council. Um, it has no statutory authority to do anything, but really just putting all those groups in the room to review this plan and make recommendations back to their respective boards, keeps everyone at the table, everyone informed, and, and really seems like the best way to, to compile this plan. Take, take the MPO's plan, take TBARDA's plan, take all that input into this one board, make recommendations back to the respective boards as to what would be included in the plan in these recommendations to the Board of County Commission as we, we move forward. Um, it's been a good exercise. I mean, you, you get you know, a broad section of, of the uh, community and its representation, and, and really the best thing is having all those entities that are doing transit and land use at the table at the same time. I think it's a very efficient way, and I think it's, it's what Brad's proposing is it's a good uh, way to move forward. Anything to add? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I, I just uh, think I uh, listened to the rest of the board members about some of the things that they thought uh, should be done between now and November of 2014, and listened to them here. We all have one common understanding of what is what is what is to be done between now and then, and so that uh, they can have some project management and, and making sure that these are, are, are progressing in an integrated manner. Uh, one of the things, for instance, that, that was added was an accountability plan, very much like the school board has for the additional half cent um, property tax. Because there's there's some kind of some approach to say to this to our citizens, yeah, there's there's gonna be some other people looking at this and don't know what's involved in that, but that was that was one thing that I suggested to you here. And I, that's uh, that's all I'm going to say right now. I do want to point out uh, Vice Mayor Crozier in the audience is the chair of the ACPT. Um, I don't know if she has any <laughs> thoughts on that, so we're putting this on the board, but uh, I think she's in support of it. Is there a motion to uh, follow this recommendation? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? If you would please just re clarify the major change. The major change. Are you, are you sort of reconstituting the advisory board in a different capacity? Is that the major change? Well, we, we 
we did that, um, the, the, the project advisory board for the alternative analysis was a similar makeup. Um, we don't have the members of Hillsboro, MPO, and Hart. We replaced them with two members of the Health Planning Council. Other than that, the, the makeup of the boards, um, not necessarily the personnel, but the boards they represent is, is the same. So we'll be re sort of commissioning the tasks of this board. To, to, yes. to review all the components of the plan. And propose a, a true, whatever would be a final right. plan. Right, to go beyond just the alternative analysis to review all the elements of that plan and make recommendations back to their respective boards as well as the Board of County Commission on this holistic the, the plan. Right. Right. Well. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Dyson. Yeah, I, um, endorse the idea of this uh, being an advisory Board, but when we get down to the actual, what we're saying here is this thing, this board is going to provide the oversight and direction to the elders. And that means that this board is going to provide the oversight and the direction, and to me that means the control um, of a $700,000 um, bus plan that, that the TSD is planning to pay for, or it could be $300,000 marketing and branding uh, study that we're doing, um, and they're going to be controlling this rather than that being controlled by the PSDA. Um, the second um, problem I have with, with this is that um, uh, we get down to the objectives, and most of the objectives uh, consist of tasks that have got to be completed by this board. Uh, you take something like, for example, develop and monitor public involvement strategy, uh, develop a referendum information package, um, develop product management plans, and so forth. These are, these are things that are going to require a staff to do. Um, and I think that if we're going to have a staff and there's going to be staff work, then there should be some provision for financing this. So there should be a, I don't see the, uh, anything here saying how much we're planning to put into this uh, project. And I think it should be part of the consideration. Um, the third thing is uh, we're including the PPC in this. The PPC is going to disappear in three months. Um, and that's going to be part of the MBO. Um, when we're looking at the bus plan, um, we're looking at managed lanes for BRT. We're talking about the Howard Franklin Bridge uh, project, among other things. These are all appropriately um, under the aegis of the DOT. So I think that the presence of the BTC is, uh, I mean, they're going to be just superfluous very shortly. And uh, I think the DOT should be included in this as well. Um, and finally, I think that um, the voters, um, when they are asked to consider this, uh, are going to be very um, appreciative of the fact that there has been a, a committee formed to coordinate all of the various aspects. But uh, I think one of the things that the branding study has already um, brought to our awareness is that the perception of the voters is that um, uh, there is an alphabet soup of uh, acronyms of the various uh, committees and, uh, that are charged with doing the transportation planning for this region. Um, and again, they'd be happy to know that we did create a committee for this, but um, there might be some sort of um, um, pushback uh, from people who think that we have created a committee simply to push through the, the referendum project. So I, I welcome the advisory role of the, the committee, but to, to turn the whole thing over uh, Taking the, supervising the, and directing the money that we have allocated to this 
and that we are paying for, I think we should consider very carefully by what kind of responsibility and authority to get them. I think they do remain advisory. It is PST that staffs the meeting. DOT attends the meeting, as does TBARA, MPO. And because there are so many elements, and, and there's there's funding that's shared. The, the, the MPO is, is working on the station area planning, which right now, until such time where the MPO and the PPC are combined, uh, the PPC will be addressing those zoning changes and land use changes that this plan contemplates. So having them at the table now, and then perhaps if and when it's merged, they're, they're up to speed when, when that happens. And those, those studies and those activities of creating a countywide plan are going on now. So it, it, I think it's a good idea that they're at the table. Um, and then I think some of them will just switch hats. They will, they will go from a PPC member to an MPO slash PPC member. And we'll have that, that background. So I, I think it is. But again, I, I, think, I think control probably isn't the word I see. I, I just see them, again, as advisory, PSDA is staffing it. And the, again, the, the benefit there, that they're receiving that information, and not just bringing it back to us, but also, I, I, I'm there representing Chibarta, so can say, you know, I sat at this meeting and, and making this recommendation that amendments to our plan go into the Chibarta master plan, go into the MPO long range transportation plan, go into PSDA's transit development plan. So I, I think it remains, largely advisory, any real decisions will have to be made by those respective boards. Because again, this board has no authority to, to make any decisions. They are simply going to advise the respective boards that they represent um, as we move forward. Um, Mr. Dustin? Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is one of the concerns I have going forward with this excessive anyway. This bond. Thank you. 